Thank you. Good afternoon. We would like to start the Ruby Prize 2022 awarding ceremony. The Ruby Prize is aimed at and recognize and also award those people who made the contribution as a new talent. It was started in 2013. It is actually the New Talent Award for the community. In 2020, it was actually formed as an individual award. The candidates of, of the awarding is and are recommended by all over the world. And the Ruby Association and Japan Ruby no Kai and also Matsue City, which is also also, also coordinated by the Working Committee, organizing committee of this conference and do the screening. Uh, today we would like to identify, nominate and also award the Grand Prix awardee. <laughs> Now, uh, for uh, the Ruby Prize 2022, uh, the final nominees are invited to the stage. Yuta Saito-san, Jan san Lars Kanis-san. So these three people are the final nominees of the Ruby Prize 2022. Please be seated. First of all, uh, from the Ruby Prize uh, Organizing Committee, the chair, Mr. Uh, Yukihiro Matsumoto, is coming to the stage to deliver a few words of congratulations. So I am actually quite well known as a workload and a chair. So Ruby Prize and is now presented and to these and to the person, and uh, there are three final nominees on the stage. The ruby is not actually possession of any company. It is not possessed by any organization, uh, no company, multi-association, and is, of course, uh, present, but uh, that uh, does not have the ownership of ruby. What about uh, the the copyright, maybe most of it uh, is in my hand. I possess that, but that is uh, ruby belonging to me. I don't think so. The ruby belongs to the community. So the community owns ruby, but uh, there is no physical existence of a community. The community is actually a gathering and association of individual people uh, who are committed to the ruby uh, for its enhancement, not only Japanese population, but also peoples outside of Japan uh, share the same aspiration. That's why ruby can be existent. So it is a gathering of individual people. 
So when some achievement is recorded, then why not? Then rather than actually recognizing the individuals instead of organization, that was actually the starting point of the Ruby Prize scheme. And the, the session has been actually supporting us and while sharing the same aspiration with us. So these and three final nominees are with us today. And one person uh, is uh, to be actually announced as uh, the Ruby Prize awardee. So their achievement is wonderful and really impressive. And uh, furthermore, there are many, many participants and candidates for the Ruby Prize and, uh, who are not uh, on the stage, but uh, they also made very significant contributions. So I uh, thank uh, to all of them. Uh, thank you, Mr. Matsumoto, for your a speech and a congratulatory remarks. On behalf of Matsuya City, I would like to invite the mayor, Ue Sada, to deliver a few words of congratulations. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Ue Sada. I am mayor of Matsuya. So, the Matsuya is the ruby city. Welcome to this stay. So, Matsuya is quite well known as the city of ruby. And uh, we have been actually running uh, quite long distance, and uh, we actually uh, heightened, elevate uh, the gear uh, shift, and so that and we can achieve even more speed and uh, to cover more distances. Ruby is well known to you, and uh, if I may say something, it is an actually world representative programming uh, language, which uh, is uh, disseminated across the world. It is applied to many applications, and it is loved deeply by many engineers. So it is an uh, actually the, the social infrastructure today. It is not too much to say uh, to, to mention that. Uh, so how has it been improved and modified and so corrected uh, through the history? That part might not be so well known to people in general. Um, so maybe that has been the fact. So we are in the Ruby community in which you know, volunteers and also those you know, with you know, high aspirations have been supporting Ruby. So that is how Ruby has been enhancing and also the evolu evol evolving. And so we would like to highlight a limelight on a particular people who have made a particular important, uh, particularly important uh, contribution. And so on behalf of Matsuya and also supported by M M Matsumoto-san, uh, we actually started the initiative of the Ruby Prize. And so this is uh, actually, this was uh, started in uh, 2014. And uh, now it draws more attention from the world, and the Ruby can make even more significant contribution to the well-being enhancement and also the progress in the world. That is our sincere hope and also aspiration. So now this is actually the time uh, for celebrating them, Saito-san and Jambushi-san, and also Raz Kani-san. Let me give you some background. Saito-san uh, is uh, actually making contribution to the stability enhancement uh, of uh, the Ruby, and he has been uh, working on that. And uh, John Busia, uh, not only the improvement of a Ruby uh, ecosystem, he is involved in the uh, new uh, function uh, in, in, uh, implementation. And the Lars Kanis, um, the, he is the uh, Ruby, sorry, Ruby installer, improvement of Ruby installer. He's been involved in the improvement of that for a long time. So uh, they made all uh, just a contribution to the development of a Ruby program. And as a Matsuya city, as I said before, uh, around the Ruby, we would like to just uh, uh, promote and develop uh, the city furthermore. And the Ruby city project and the Ruby city Matsue project 2.0 and so that means a virgin app that is now in progress. Particularly, uh, we would like to have a connection uh, to outside the world. Matu is a local companies, and just uh, around them, we would like to cross industrial uh, just uh, uh, collaborations, and then we would like to develop a new business ecosystem uh, to uh, just uh, create a new um, innovations and also. Uh, the global uh, businesses or globally uh, working uh, companies, we would like to develop uh, and uh, stimulate this kind of activities as well in Matsuya City. And lastly, 
um, the uh, Ruby Prize. I would like to take this opportunity to uh, uh, thank uh, uh, Matt Mutsan and the Ruby Prize Active Committee members and uh, other all the people to close my greeting. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Mayor Awiasada. So, Mayor Awiasada just uh, made uh, some introduction already, but uh, I would like to just introduce some accomplishment of the final nominees of the Ruby Prize 2022. First, uh, Yuta Saito. He, he just uh, uh, made the Ruby more stable and a stable operation on the web assembly that was uh, well evaluated. And uh, John Boussier, he is uh, uh, involved in the improvement of a Ruby, sorry, new feature improvement and implementation of Ruby system. And that uh, Lance Kanis, uh, uh, he's uh, been involved in the Ruby ecosystem development on Windows for a long time. So thank you very much for waiting. And now we would like to just announce that winner of uh, Ruby Prize 2022. So we have uh, three final nominees. And then the Ruby Prize 2022 is going to uh, go to one of them. And then I would like to ask Matsumoto san to make the uh, final announcement. Yes, a Ruby Prize 2022. The final winner is uh, uh, Saito Yuta, Mr. Uh, Yuta Saito. So Saito-san, thank you very much and congratulations. You are the winner of a Ruby Prize 2022. So let's move on to the ceremony. Uh, first, uh, Yuta Saito and the other Afanonis, Jean Boussier and the Las Canis, we would like to just uh, present uh, the uh, prize to these three people in this order. So congratulations. Thank you very much. The uh, letter of uh, um, letter and the trophy and the plate that they are given to the winner of a Ruby Prize 2022. So uh, Mayor Wesada just uh, offering the plate of uh, um, prize 1 million yen. Congratulations. And the Ruby Prize 2022, Saito san, would you please just uh, say, uh, say a few words to the audience? Thank you very much. Yes, actually, I, just it was a coincidence I started to be involved in Ruby, but uh, I tried to do something I wanted to do step by step, and then here, this is the result. Thank you very much. I'm very happy to do this. And I would like to take opportunity to all the members of the community. They accepted me even if I was a very, very beginner. But I would like to do um, something more better in order to improve uh, Ruby ecosystem. Thank you very much, Saito san. And the next is uh, uh, Jan Busia. November 11th, 2020, Ruby Prize Executive Committee Chairperson, <laughs> uh, Matt. Thank you. Arigato. Matsumoto Inchokara. Thank you. So, Matsumoto san has he given uh, the uh, just a certificate and a trophy. <coughs> Thank you. 
and Diaphragm Mayo Esada. Here, this is additional price, 100 million plate. So, um, a jambo here, uh, could you say a few words to the audience? Thank you, everyone, especially like the Matsue City for inviting me and organizing my trip. Um, I had like a really lovely time in Matsue. Uh, the food, especially, is amazing. And God knows French people are very picky with their food. Um, I would like to thank Mats and all the Ruby committers and contributors over the years for Ruby, which is uh, pay my bills, but also is source of joy every day. Uh, it's not just a practical language, it's, it's a work of art, it's beautiful. Um, so I wish to continue doing that for many years. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.続きまして最終ノミネートされましたラーズカニス様の表彰に移らせていただきます。Thank <笑> Thank you very much. Uh, so a little of a certificate and then some trophy they have been given to our last Ghanis. And then from Mayor Wesada, yes, the uh, ticket of uh, um, 100,000 yen. Sorry, 100,000 yen. Yeah, 100,000 yen uh, additional price ticket. So, Lars Kanis, could you uh, say a few words to the audience? Konnichiwa. Um, yeah, I want to thank you, everyone, as well. Um, it was a really great pleasure for me to come uh, to Japan. I uh, couldn't believe it, uh, to be honest, <laughs> that, um, yeah, for, for these uh, contributions I did, uh, yeah, but um, I will uh, carry the welcoming uh, culture of uh, Japan that I uh, have got a part of. Uh, I will carry it to Germany, and I really like it to be here. And I understand um, this invitation also as a uh, call for participation uh, for yeah, many more years. And yeah, I will try to make it real. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, Lars Ikanis. And uh, yes, yesterday there was uh, some time that uh, actually yesterday's party, he just uh, uh, played uh, Ruby he just uh, composed while he was on the flight. So anyway, I would like to ask uh, uh, Saito-san to make a, uh, a kind of a special speech to commemorate his achievement. Now, Saito-san, please. 
Uh, thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. I would like to uh, talk about WebAssembly, which is actually the basis you know, of this you know, award for me today. I am very honored to be given uh, this uh, opportunity and this award. My self-introduction, my name is Saito, and uh, I am actually a university student of Waseda University. I, my major is uh, computer science. While being a student, I also work in a company called GoodNotes, which is actually a note application company. And the language Swift and is actually the main uh, assignment, and I provide web assembly support for that language. Therefore, my interest in web assembly and also the language processing in Ruby, I have been making contribution to uh, the uh, issues and related to web, web assembly. That is actually the background of the boarding too. So what is WebAssembly? As is self-explanatory, in the context of web, the development is be being conducted. So browser implemented JavaScript and, uh, is uh, different. So it is different from the program of JavaScript. In 2017, it was actually launched. Therefore, it is a fairly young project. Already, however, in world, all over the world, it is used in many products. When it was first announced, the JavaScript was rather difficult to implement, namely 3D rendering. So that was one application, and that was the main actual application of WebAssembly. This is actually the Matsuya Castle based on WebAssembly product. So the so WebAssembly was is being run at a very high speed by using 3D rendering. There are interesting features in WebAssembly. The format does not depend on the CPU architecture. What does it mean? No dependency on architecture. So you might remember about the intermediate representation of compiler. Compiler is designed easy enough for the operator, sometimes for the optimization, information is sustained. So as a program optimization system, it was not particularly optimal. In the case of WASM, however, so the distribution is optimized. It is actually a major concept of the design from the very beginning. That is interesting. And so it doesn't depend on a source language. Therefore, it is a rather low layer than specification. JVM is sometimes compared with that, and the Java is an actual. So JVM is rather strongly flavored by Java, but this one, WebAssembly, does not depend on source language. And also, the access and restriction to host and environment is rather comfortably done. So unreliable program is executed in platform. So that is quite an interesting and also important role, I suppose. What about the speed? It is not equivalent to the native. However, it is a fairly high. High speed is actually assured. That is one of the features as well. So the browser is the main environment, as I have said. The WASM itself is actually designed from the very initiation time so that it can be run and performing in an environment other than browser. And therefore, in the specification itself, there is no statement which depends on JavaScript. So that is an intention. Along with that an intention, currently, it is an actually, it provides a various and a runtime in the independent from a browser. What is well known is a was, uh, wasm time. So that is an actually primarily developed by Fastly. And also Intel's WASM runtime is also made available. IoT and also that an embedding environment and other ones and in which it is run. So the resources are rather limited in those environment. What about the WASM specification? So there is not, a, it doesn't actually require so many things to the system. Therefore, the, as, as a, as a result, and it is rather easy to embed in application. And so MP and also WEDISA might be overlapped with this one. And also, when it, with regard to the host environment, so it, it's not an accessible source. So, so perhaps you can actually receive the 
input and from users, so it is convenient. So as application plugin system and also edge server uh, operated and a serverless and a platform uh, might be actually considered. So there are various uh, options and which are offered. So I have been talking about WASM and I have been actually boasting about uh, WASM. I did not talk about Ruby. However, what is an WASM? So beyond the web browser use case, and it has got a high potential as the program transformation formats. The potential is quite rich. For example, from the side of the language, if you compile to WASM, even in the host environment of ARM and also X64, or even bare metal, it can be actually run. And uh, on the pl platform side, if uh, you support WASM, you can directly support various languages. So as uh, the language uh, exchange system, de facto JSON uh, can be considered. So in JSON, the data, uh, it is actually the data exchange and a de facto standard. So I hope that WASM can become uh, the de facto standard of the program exchange format. That is my hope. Now, let me move on to the next uh, part of my talk. Now, when, when time goes by, developers' interest uh, can be actually concentrated on application. I think it is a trend we can observe today. For example, before the container and uh, in those previous ages, and, uh, if uh, you would like to distribute uh, the whole environment, uh, you would have used uh, VM images. In reality, file system and process and segregation or isolation are requirement. As long as it is uh, isolated, it's okay. As therefore, the container uh, technology and that sort of things emerged, and then in our day-to-day -day practice, it is used. But the file system and also Ubuntu are uh, actually destroy an isolation requirement. So if uh, there is no such a requirement of isolation, uh, such as another uh, simplistic uh, calculation and uh, file reading, what would you think? Uh, so uh, the container is not really suitable. So when uh, there is a, such a context and the web assembly binary uh, can be used as an application unit, perhaps uh, that would be actually better fit than the idea and the concept. Of course, not everything is to be replaced uh, from the VM to container. The main environment and, uh, was and actually transformed before. So what you would like to do is rather straightforward, simple. You can do the simple things in a simple manner. That is the world we are going to in going into. So now I'm going to talk about Ruby. So Ruby is uh, quite a popular language that is uh, used for uh, many purposes, but it's still that is not yet uh, complete. That means uh, that is not yet untapped up or unexplored a part of the languages. And of course, there is a good point and bad points of the language. However, in order to know that, you need to have uh, some platform on which the application can run. So, WebAssembly, just a uh, uh, Ruby support for WebAssembly, that is what I did uh, to uh, create a different uh, to Asian uses. And then the uh, Ruby and the others, uh, that can work uh, in on browser in it, and any other uh, ecosystem any other uh, the platform system. And then Ruby Anywhere, that is a slogan I made uh, actually by myself. But uh, to be honest, uh, actually there is some initiative uh, to use C Ruby on WebAssembly. However, that is uh, based on the use of a, a browser-based uh, uh, tool chain that is Enscripting. So that means uh, WASM original possibility is quite uh, limited in such kind of situation. So browser-based uh, tool chain to WASI, uh, that is standardized uh, WASI that can work even outside of the browser. So that kind of is, um, just a specification uh, support that has been published. And then actually I did that this year's uh, Ruby conference as well. And then here, this is the uh, WASI.
So that is was here, was here. That is the subject of uh, this uh, prize winning. And then actually that is uh, just a merge onto the mainstream and then that is the beginning of this year. And the uh, tools and the libraries, I just uh, have been uh, implementing uh, different uh, things uh, step by step on it. And as a result of that, uh, you can write uh, this kind of Ruby on an HTML script. So it looks uh, quite uh, simple and easy to have a try, right? So why don't you just uh, try it yourself? So uh, I are a big demonstration and other thing. I did that, but uh, today I'm gonna show you a new demonstration uh, program, and that is a Jupyter notebook, the Ruby program on Jupyter notebook. That is uh, what I want to show here. So I don't want to use uh, the uh, internet uh, uh, connection here in this room, so I just made a kind of a short video. Yeah, this is a browser and a Jupyter notebook. That is a Python executable environment and uh, you can just write Ruby on that system. So strings are written here like this, and there are some method completion, or method suggestions, and uh, when you run this program, I think you can see the result. So this is just a simple Jupyter, but uh, no use of a server resource. This is uh, working only on a client side. So Jupyter does not, Jupyter usually use a, a server uh, space, but here you can do that only on a browser. And one more thing I would like to show is that that is a little bit more complicated. This one. First, with the bundler and the nest regimes have been installed, and this is a bundler inline and a gem file that is uh, written on uh, just a script, and then run this part first. And uh, here, this is a charty and uh, net, uh, red red data sets uh, D A R U that is a tool based on the data set that is for graph lot gem and data sets. So that means download that kind of things remotely. So I'm you now using that. And here the require has been written and charty that is initialized and here, this is uh, here, uh, the plot chart by Ruby, and that is a chart he called. And here, uh, that is uh, uh, actually executable on a browser. And then directly on Jupyter, you can show this kind of a plot uh, chart. So this is a new product of mine. And then actually, this um, has been posted already to GitHub pages. So here, this one, this URL, that is a link to that particular page. So if you're interested in this program, why don't you just access and then have it to try with you, try it uh, 
have it try yourself. And then challenges, current challenges. Well, that is uh, rather stable, but still there are some other challenges remaining. The first one is the code size, I believe, particularly the Ruby script itself. That is a binary uh, si size, but that, that uh, just uh, take a lot of the space. And um, for example, the minification, actually I try to use a minification in order to reduce the uh, space. That is not necessary for a grammatical purpose, but actually reduction it's not so much. And then because of binding, you cannot just shorten the name of the variables, and then it may be a little bit too difficult to do something on a source in a source code. And then imp interpret itself is a rather uh, a big in size. That is another challenge. So I want I want to do something on that. So here yeah, that's all I wanted to say. But uh, this is summary with the Ruby three point two. Web assembly and uh, YZ, and just uh, I try to uh, uh, just uh, develop this thing that, that uh, could be uh, the next generation of uh, execution environment. And then I hope um, this uh, uh, is our first step or the one step towards the, uh, Ruby anywhere. So that's all. Thank you very much. I want to continue this effort. Thank you very much. Uh, Saito san and then uh, Jean Boussier and uh, uh, Las Canes, please just give them another round of big hands. Thank you very much. So, thank you very much. So, this is the end of uh, just a award ceremony of Ruby Prize 2022.